humans need air to live. Our lungs work best at sea level. Airplanes are most efficient at high altitudes, where the air is thin and smooth. This dichotomy means we've invented a machine that thrives where we don't. From the beginning of high altitude research, flyers coped with thin air by inhaling oxygen through rubber tubes and later form-fitting masks. In 1937, researchers for the Army Air Corps began research flights in a modified Lockheed Electra. This airplane, the XC-35, was the first airplane built with a pressurized cabin. The fuselage had a circular cross-section to eliminate stress points. Its windows were made smaller and openings were sealed. The inside cabin became a pressure capsule, much like a large soda can. Within five years, both the B-29 bomber and the 307 Stratoliner began flying in pressurized comfort above 20,000 feet. Turbofan engines compress incoming air with a series of blades right behind the fan. At highest pressure point, some of this hot air is diverted. This bleed air is sent to de-ice the wings, operate pneumatic systems, and some starts its way to the cabin. The hot pressurized air is cooled in an intercooler and is directed to the plane's belly, where an air cycle refrigerator cools it further. The pressurized air is now mixed with the air from the cabin in a manifold and is moved by fans into the cabin. To maintain pressure in the cabin, incoming air is held by opening and closing an outflow valve. This valve is regulated by pressure sensors. The pressurized cabin is like a balloon that has a leak but is being constantly filled. From the smallest business jet to the largest airliner, the Air Force Research Laboratory's research and development of pressurized cabins have made modern flight accessible, safe, and comfortable. <laughs>